Well, welcome back. I'm here with my FTM 200 enjoying it. And I couldn't help but notice the announcement of the FTM 500. And I've been doing a lot of thinking about it and imagining what it could be like. And I thought I would share some thoughts here and see what you all thought. Yesu says their new radio will be available in March and that is less than 10 days from when this is being recorded. So we're really right around the corner from when that's going to happen. Um, I've looked at a lot of stuff out there, but of course I watched Yesu's North America YouTube channel post regarding the new radio. And I was particularly interested in how um, John on that announcement positioned the 500 as not a straight replacement for the 400 that was discontinued not long ago. And of course that got my curiosity up. I mean, what, what does that mean? John was quick to point out, you know, stay with us. We're the ones that are going to give you the real information. And he's right about that. But I don't know. I enjoy thinking about it and thinking about what might be coming up. When I did my FTM 200 versus FTM 300 video, um, I showed you a clip which you're looking at right now showing the band scope performance between the 400 and the 300. It's hard to imagine that you're, we're not going to see some noticeable improvement in the 500 in the performance. The 200 announcement video debuted in February 2022, and here we are in February of 2023, having fun speculating about another release, and only one year has passed. Uh, it's been fun watching the ham radio social media. Uh, things have been blowing up with discussion. The first thing I noticed came from MLNS from the UK. They offered a reservation for 50 pounds down payment along with some general specs available for all to review. In the press release marked February 3rd we got some basic facts. This will be the new flagship. This radio carries on the FTM line basics um, that being a 50 watt dual band radio that is capable of C4 FM. Stock is said to be available in March. It will have a front-facing speaker, which appears to be just below the, the display. The button layout has seen a significant update from previous flagship. The mic and body look pretty much the same to me. Although as more information has come out, we'll be going over in just a second and some of the differences that I think we can pretty much count on this point. Looking around the web, as time has gone along, I've noticed various flyers popping up. They are all using the same initially released photo. You know, when you look at it, besides the button differences, it's really hard to get a sense of its scale. So it, it was really hard to imagine that this is much bigger than the 200, just looking at that picture. And of course, there have been some amusing fakes floating around out there too. Here's one with the uh, 819 screen comped onto the FTM 500. No way this is real, but it was sure fun to look at. And of course, if you look carefully at the edges, you can see that it was put on there pretty quickly. And then another one came along and I thought that looks just like the FTM 200 screen over top of it. You know, we're seeing various signals being received and transmitted. I did not notice audio actually with it. So it just looked like a uh, screen capture put on there. And again, if you look at the edges, you can see that it's quickly placed over top of the picture. So I had some fun looking at those spoofs and everything and looking at the comments on Facebook and other places, various people talking about whether it's going to have memory banks, should the screen be bigger or various things like that. And then along came what looked like a Photoshop picture of the FTM 500 fathead. And I had almost written that off until I realized that that's uh, a full page ad from various hand magazines like QRZ. And uh, that's real. And it just makes that front screen look so much larger than that earlier press release photograph. I don't know. Maybe it's, it is a little bit exaggerated, but it's been much more exciting to look at that and see some of the uh, features that they list on there. Confirm touchscreen, a new version version of easy to operate, uh, touch features that allow the operator to quickly initiate communications by touching the target frequency, which I assume means that if you have the band scope displayed and you see activity, you're able to touch and go directly to whatever's happening on that frequency. 
search and go touch, which enables dual receive of a desired frequency during main channel operation. Don't really understand what that means at this point. So it's, I'm there looking at that and then I noticed that YouTuber the Smoking Ape found a listing in Japan with a lot more details. I think there have been some other releases since that give me more confidence in the information layer. Um, translating that site, um, I see a screen size of 2.4 inches, which you compare to the 200s, 2 inches, that's definitely larger, but not substantially so. It'll be interesting to see how much difference that makes. Will it be big enough to make a touch operation reasonable? Time will tell. I am expecting the screen to be sharper with better color. Uh, again, referencing that comparison video of the Bansco performance. Just looking at the screens between the two radios that we see in that video example, the 400 just did not quite have the same sharpness and um, richness of color that we see in the 300. Um, I mean, that is a compressed YouTube video, so won't know for sure, but it just looks that way to me. And then the next big thing to be discussed was the cost of the new FTM 500. Here is a tweet by Matt, a fellow Minnesota ham, K0LWC, asking if the FTM 500, 500 comes in at $700, is that too much? Why or why not? And you could click to vote on that. And as of this screen capture, we had 61% saying that is too expensive. I don't know. You can get some handhelds, some HTs that are close to that much. Uh, for a flagship, I don't think that's terribly out of line. Although if it does not come with like Bluetooth on it, I, you start to wonder what else could be in there to justify that cost. The front speaker seems really interesting to me. Uh, I don't know how that's implemented, obviously, but when I mounted my FTM 200 in the car, I initially thought about putting it under the seat with the head on the dash somewhere, but that turned out not to be practical because the speaker's then under the, under the seat and I couldn't hear it. As it is right now, the speaker faces the gear shift, but that's not really a problem because it's definitely loud enough that I can clearly hear it. The other thing people have talked about in quite a few posts is whether it has memory banks or not. I kind of like to see that. I like to organize my memories. I've seen a lot of people arguing whether that's really necessary. I'd be curious what you all think if you have a comment on that. Most people think that the that this radio will not have memory banks. So we'll see how much impact that has on people's take. So what can we make of all the information that's out there right now? The wait is nearly over, which makes this, in my opinion, the perfect time to start thinking about how this fits in the Yaesu lineup. And I have a couple of thoughts that sum up my take on what I think is a pretty exciting announcement. Uh, first, I looked over the current line you see at Yaesu's website, and visually, this update seems to bring this particular part of their flagship lineup with a sharp color. Um, you know, one of the things that stands out also is they all have the big knob somewhere on there. You know, they have angled surfaces. So it's not just kind of a flat, flat front panel with various buttons on there. Um, looking at the top of the FTM 500 here, I see some buttons kind of slightly angled at the very top and then the buttons at the top of the big knob appear to be slightly receding towards the top of them. I guess we'll see if that's true in real life. Um, but it just has a nice aggressive look to it that makes it look exciting. Uh, secondly, uh, we've already talked about this a little bit, but enough time has passed that I think this the flagship deserved the computing improvements that have come along in the in the intervening years. Looking at that band display on the 400, it just seemed painfully slow to me. I'm guessing there's other ways that that will be manifested. And one of the things I think will not just be computing, computing performance, but uh, control schemes. You know, more time has gone by and Yesu will have had some new ideas on 
how you can access things that you might do on a daily basis more quickly with fewer steps, which in my opinion equals quality of life improvements. So I appreciate everybody stopping by and I would love to hear from you what you think about this announcement, what you think we should expect to see in the next few weeks, depending on exactly when this is going to be released and whether you think you'll be purchasing this radio. Until next time, I hope you enjoyed and you'll come back for a future video. Talk to you later.